Welcome to this video. So today I want to talk about why do we fetishize new technology so much, but within the context of photography. So from facial recognition to algorithmically reading behavior, technology is currently employed to read images for various purposes. Algorithms can supposedly read images to detect crime, read emotional output from the human face and interpret body language and movement. So, for example, the deployment of technology in the process of hiring has increased recently. In many companies in recent years, there, are, uh, there have been several different companies producing software that can allegedly read our personality based on our facial expressions during interviews. Much of the technology is based on using the face as an index to read emotion through facial expressions. A camera is used and the visual images produced are fed through algorithms to determine the personality of the potential worker. There has been much debate and evidence produced that these algorithms are biased against certain races. For example, a recent, recently released documentary called Coded Bias explored these biases in facial recognition technology. Also, a 2019 Guardian article outlined a lack of neutrality in technology under certain circumstances. In many respects, as I already mentioned, technology is being fetishized as a method for impartiality. That technology is impartial could not be further from the truth, as also recent research has suggested that there is inbuilt biases in these technologies. After all, they are programmed by humans and studies have shown that many individuals working on these algorithms are white men, while algorithmic training, which is necessary for functioning algorithms, is often carried out on images with white male faces, for example. The fetishization of technology through history should teach us to be wary of believing new technologies will somehow be our salvation or have uh, this idea of impartiality within them. I want to look at the history of photography in this context, as after its discovery in 1835, it was also fetishized through a misguided belief that it had properties to show us an unmediated omni-truth. Uh, photography also remains key in our current technologies, as it is the medium most often examined as part of new algorithmic technologies, for instance, cameras are highly used in many of these new technologies to grab images and then examine them. So the discovery of the photographic process, or sometimes what is re referred to as the fixing of the shadows, is credited to Louis de Guerre and William Henry Fox Talbot. Neither could have imagined the vast applications of the process in the preceding years of its discovery. Uh, photography was often used as a documentary tool to assist in the sciences, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was believed that one's facial features held a key to determining one's personality. At one stage, this was even studied as a science known as physiognomy. Physiognomy, now debunked, was a racist science. It declared that the facial features of the typical white Anglo-Saxon male contained the most positive attributes, while placing features of other races lower down. So photography as a new technology then was deployed in helping to determine the characteristics of an individual based on photographs of their face. It was easy to study the photograph of the face as making the photograph made that face then uh, easily available. So there were many texts produced over the course of the late 19th and 20th century about the camera's discerning eye as it was deployed in many areas of anthropology and tantonology. So the camera as a new technology was being fetishized by virtue, it was a mechanical eye. Sounds familiar, right? Okay, so photography was not only deployed within physiognomy, but also used across several areas to reveal the mechanics of the human body, which can be seen in studies by people such as Edward Moybridge and Etienne Jules Marie. So let's look at some historical cases where the camera has been fetishized in the context of new technology. So as I mentioned, earlier studies by Moybridge and Marie revealed the mechanical nature of the human body. These methods were further adopted for the workplace 
by Frank and Leon Gilbreth. So I've discussed Gilbreth's work in another video from the perspective of image, body and space. So I won't go into detail on it here. You can uh, watch the other video. I will put a link below. Uh, so just to summarize the Gilbreth's use of technology, they used the camera and they claimed it could help make work processes more efficient. The Gilbreth's study lay within the discourse of science so their idea was to use labor more efficiently to meet the goals of the corporation. And that study then was based, that study was based on the earlier experiments of Maria Moybridge. Uh, so the idea of such a project was if the movement of the skilled labor could be recorded and then these movements could be reproduced by another worker to produce the same results, thus helping to increase productivity and produce larger profits. So once recorded, these actions then were later mechanicized, uh, thus removing the need for skilled workers as they could be taught to any unskilled worker. Motion studies offered a more gentle way to re rehabilitate scientific management's shattered reputation while deftly positioning Gilbert's firm as a leading practitioner. So Frank and Lillian Gilbert's work was largely based on, as I mentioned, this Marie and Moybridge's earlier, earlier experiments with photography and how people move. And they sought to produce a working body that could be defined in terms of functionality. Though Frank Albrecht did his best to distance himself from earlier experiments, it's clear that his work was heavily influenced by them. So the Gilbrechts recorded their motion studies using what they call the cyclograph, which involved attaching small lights to moving parts of the body. The movement of these lights would then be recorded on the image showing the movements involved in the task. So according to Frank Albrecht, the wavy lines represented the mental and therefore physical hesitation that stemmed from inexperience or lack of habit. This would show the inefficiencies involved in the process, thus allowing for correction. So the process could then be broken into distinct movements to allow knowledge of the skilled craftsman to be easily passed on to the skilled laborer. So according to scientific management, the motions of any labor could easily be acquired, making the worker disposable even after perfecting the given tasks. The individual can only sell their potential to perform the required motions and hence become a product of capital to be traded and bought by the capitalist. Though the motion studies were an important part of Gilbert's work, there is actually little evidence to suggest they actually played any major role in creating more efficient workplaces. It was the processes from Taylor's scientific management system that helped most with the long-term gains in efficiency. Despite this, the photographic and film work carried out by the Gilbert's was heavily used in the promotion of their firm. In several lectures given by Frank Gilbert, he used the cyclographs taken on various jobs to demonstrate improvements in efficiency. This helped him set uh, his company apart from other agencies that were offering efficiency services at the time. Therefore, the technology of the camera was fetishized in terms of what it could reveal about the work processes that the Gilberts examined. So let's look at another example, uh, another scientific discourse that was applied to the corporate applicant at the beginning of the 20th century was physiognomy, which I mentioned earlier, which was the study of the features of the face and how that could supposedly tell what our personality was. So Catherine Blackford's application of this, this pseudoscience uh, to photographs of corporate applicants displayed a growing belief in the start of the 20th century of photography's impartial attitudes, attributes, excuse me, that could be applied to the work to achieve more efficient results. So the pseudoscience was applied to the hiring process by Blackford and involved examining the new applicant's face in order to determine their fitness for their applied position for the applied position. At its height, Blackford's methodology was applied by nearly 200 corporations in their hiring process. The process was a combination of standardization introduced through Taylorism and social Darwinism. Uh, Blackford's agency saw the face, head and body as an index to employee fitness. Uh, 
while photography was not generally used in the character analysis, as Blackford's methodology relied mostly on reading the character in person, it did offer a way to legitimize and demonstrate her work in the absence of a subject. The photograph was seen by Blackford as, an, as important as it froze the subject's physiognomy in a static position, which allowed her to bypass the facial expressions that might cloud the view on the soul. The method of reading character found favour in scientific circles in the mid-19th century. Blackford did not agree with all eugenic beliefs, such as better breeding, but she did see physical characteristics as both immutable and biologically determined. The idea that physical traits were inherited and confined to certain social groups was one of the core beliefs of the, of the eugenicist. Photography was used as evidence or proof of the theories behind eugenics in the hope that it would be considered a legitimate science. However, the legi legitimacy of this science was questionable, as David Green has pointed out that recent studies have suggested that the development of eugenics in its content and its methods were inextricably bound to specific ideological class interests. Thus, the form of eugenics employed by Blackbird, Blackford can be traced to a need for capitalism to create identifiable classes suited, suited to certain tasks. After all, a prerequisite of capital is a class of people with only their labour to offer. Blackford claimed that the head was a map to the level of intelligence. Despite the claims of social Darwin, Darwinists such as Blackford, the view that there was a link between the physical and psychological features of an individual, individual became less popular as the 1920s wore on. Intelligence was still viewed as being measurable for most forms of work, but rather than using physical features to determine this, a new method known as aptitude testing then came to the fore. Uh, thus, Blackford's methods fell, fell out of favour, and of course, physiognomy was debunked as what it is, a racist a pseudoscience. So the camera... Uh, a reasonably new technology was fetishized in both examples. Uh, in the first, to attempt to prove the efficiency of the working body, and in the second, it was claimed that the photograph could reveal the true nature of our personality based on using the face as an index. Over time, we have come to realize that the camera in itself could not lead to a more inefficient workplace or read the character uh, from an image of our face. It is, in fact, the, the ideological deployment of the camera as a technical instrument, which was used rhetorically to try and convince us that it could do either of these things. In a similar fashion, we are now seeing an ideological deployment of algorithm-based technologies to choose the most suitable candidate or control our public spaces. But I again fear we are merely fetishizing what we don't yet fully understand. So, thank you for watching this video. Uh, indeed, if you got this far. So, I just wanted to kind of reflect on the content of the video and talk a little bit more about technology, just for the final few seconds. Uh, so, it's important to remember that I'm talking about technology, not as a bad thing. Technology can bring many improvements to our life. It has brought many improvements to our life, but we must be wary of how technology seeks to true ideology, I suppose, to control us. So for instance, technology is not going to bring us better applicants uh, to the workplace. Uh, it's, you know, the, 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 the technology of the camera didn't necessarily improve workplace uh, conditions or uh, efficiency in work. It was scientific management that, that, that did that. So we just need to remember that or be at least wary that photography and technology in general, because when the camera was a, a new technology and was less understood, we understand it more now, it was used in, in scrupulous means to try and further pseudosciences like physiognomy and racial sciences uh, to so we should be aware in that same sense of modern technology and how technology is being used to further different ideological causes. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, 
If you'd like to see more content like this, then hit subscribe at the bottom, that really helps me and helps the channel. And also you can hit like on the video if you did like the video or if you have any comments, please feel free to make them as well. Thank you for watching. Bye now.